Good morning, church. How are we? Are we happy to be in church this morning? I mean, how good was that time of worship? Why don't we put our hands together one more time for our worship team? They do such a great job week in and week out, and uh, it's just such a joy. And I just want to take one more time to just acknowledge if you're visiting us for the first time, I got to meet some people this morning, some incredible uh, friends from different parts of the world. And we, I just want to make sure that we get to say hello to you and just because you matter to us. You know, this is amazing, but just that one-on-one when we connect is just a whole nother level. And so just make sure that you linger a bit after the service, if that's okay, in the foyer. And uh, if I don't come to you, feel free to please come to me. I'd love to meet you and get to know you and and just, just let you know that you really do matter. Well, this morning we are diving deep again into a series. We've been, I think it's week six now, called back to basics. And uh, in fact, the whole idea of this series came from a scripture in Hebrews chapter six, where Paul is talking to the church and he begins to say, moving on from these. And what was he talking about? He was addressing these basic foundational essences, if I could use that word, uh, on the Christian faith. And we, we looked week one on the topic of grace. And then we looked at faith and repentance, baptisms last week. We went through it, eternal judgment, and uh, I've been looking forward to this topic. So it's next week is sort of the uh, it's sort of the the end point of the series. But this morning, I want to talk about this this topic called impartation. One of the translations say, call, refers to it as laying on of hands. And and you know, I, I, as I was preparing this message, I was I was thinking about uh, this saying that I've heard in school. How many of you have heard this saying, uh, which is it's going to come up on the screen? It says, "One bad apple can spoil the barrel." I don't know if you've ever heard the saying. How many of you have heard the saying? Maybe if you didn't hear the saying, you were probably that bad apple now. <laughs> but but, but the, whole, the whole idea is, the whole idea is that, that uh, when, when your kids are growing up, you're, you know, parents are so mindful about who they hang out with. And there's always that one kid in class, isn't it? They're just a bit more arrogant. They're just a bit more abrasive. They're just a bit more, I would say probably just a bit more confident and they get misunderstood and, you know, they pick on the teacher. They, you know, play pranks on other kids. And then next thing you know, you've been hearing about this kid and then your child is walking next to that kid and you're like, oh, I'm not sure if they need to be friends. And, you know, and there's a whole idea of you put, and if you're a teacher, if you're a teacher, how many teachers do we have uh, right, right here? Look at that. You know what I'm talking about. You can put, you can put like, you can go to a classroom of 20 kids and they are fantastic until the, the, the little, little naughty <laughs> Apple called Stephen rocks up and he changes the whole tide. You had a great pi picnic planned up and then this one kid can influence the whole tide of the room. Isn't that funny? Well, impartation is pretty much that in the positive direction. And what that means is whenever you're trying to, they say that whenever you're trying to pick up a new habit, uh, you know, hang around people that already have those habits. If you're trying to get fit, even over getting a gym subscription, get fit friends. If you're trying to be financially sound, find somebody that has a few runs on the board in that area. And so that's what this whole idea of impartation is. If you're taking notes, the title of my message is The Power of Impartation. If you're looking for something more uh, millennial or Gen Z, hashtag, I cop that. I cop that. I cop that. The Power of Impartation. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you this morning that as we speak about this topic, that even though it seems a bit complex, that there would be space and an appetite in this room for us to perceive, understand, discern, and pick up what you're speaking to us. In your name we pray, amen. Impartation, what is impartation? Impartation is a spiritual transfer that takes place through a relationship. It's literally a transfer. And you know, the Bible, you can't skip past the Bible without discovering stories upon stories of people that had what I call a God transfer, an impartation, a moment that was beyond just the natural. It's not just the, when two people shake hands, there's a sense of warmth, when two people hug, there's a sense of, of, of connection, but this is beyond that. It, it goes from the realm of the natural to the realm of the supernatural, where there's literally a transfer. And so what I want to do is I, I had to sort of cherry pick which story to share because the Bible, let me tell you, is filled with different stories and instances. And I want to talk about, I don't even want to use the word 
different kinds of impartation, but that's the best I could come with. I want to share about four different points and around that a story. Here's the first one. Impartation for spiritual awakening. We see in the Bible constantly people that were going about their life, doing about their thing, and there was a moment where either they had their own experience with God or most likely there was some other individual who called them into a place of prominence. The one character that I think about is a guy called Saul. I don't know if you've heard about this guy called Saul, but he was the first king of Israel. And the whole context is the nation of Israel was done being ruled by judges, a.k.a. lawyers. They said, we don't want to just have lawgivers. We want to have a king. All the other neighboring kingdoms have a king. We want to have a king. And so they said, they're talking to this guy called Samuel, the first, the guy who was currently managing the kingdom. Imagine people coming to you saying, hey, we, don't want, we, we, wanna, we wanna have a king, your, your job's redundant, right? They're having this conversation with Samuel, who was also a prophet, a guy that could hear God, a guy that could sense things, a guy that could discern. But, but on the other side of, this, of, the, of the town, there was this young guy called Saul, and Saul's dad had a donkey business. Now, that doesn't mean, mean much relevance to us, but literally in that day and age, that was the business of trans, transportation. So his dad was in the business of transportation, but all the donkeys were missing, and so Saul is desperate. He's been searching this town. He's been searching on that mountain. He's been searching where they graze, but he cannot find the donkey until one of his friends say, hey, why don't you go to that guy called Samuel? Because it seems like he hears God. And so they say, let's go to Samuel. Let's book in an appointment with Samuel so that he can tell us where to find the donkey. And so Saul is desperate, desperately looking for a donkey because unless he finds a donkey, the business is going to go south. That means no income coming through. He's not going to be able to spoil and spend time with his friends. So Saul is in that predicament. On the other side, you've got prophet Samuel who's got this kingdom matter in his hands and God begins to tell him the guy that you're about to meet is going to be the king. I want you to notice how significant is this story because Saul, when he woke up that morning, his prayer was this, God, help me find the donkey. Samuel, when he woke up that morning, God was saying, you're about to meet the next king. Side note, there are some of you that have moved to Dubai thinking God brought you here for a better life or a better job. But I want you to know that God actually has a plan and a purpose for you. God has a people group, God has a city, God has a tribe, God has a family that He's gonna use you to impact. And so many times we pray such low prayers, but the beautiful part is God still answers those prayers because what I love about the story is Samuel actually tells him where the donkeys are. But then he goes on to say, I'm giving you the paraphrased version just because we've got a lot of Bible to read and don't have too much time to go through everything. But literally Samuel says, but why are you minding these things? Why are you worried about the donkey? Because God has got greater matters in your hands and literally anoints him. That's a word. That's a word that prays for him as king. And check out what it says. We're going to parachute into the text of what Samuel says to Saul. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 5, it says, the spirit of the Lord, Samuel is talking to Saul, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you you and you will prophesy with them and check these words and be turned into another man and let it be I love this when these signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands for God is with you he's literally telling Saul the donkeys have been sorted but God has not just called you to be a donkey chaser he's called you to be a kingdom builder He's telling him that I'm calling you to a new place and that requires an encounter, that requires an impartation, that requires a transfer of supernatural into your natural. That's literally what's happening. But I like how Samuel finishes the text. He says to him, we will know what is about to happen when the occasion demands. Church, you know, there are some of you that are here. Sometimes you come out for prayer and somebody prays for you like, oh, that was good. That was a nice goosebump. That was awesome. That took care of that. So back. Sometimes we don't even know what's happening because sometimes a moment of impartation is a moment of investment. And it might be two Tuesdays from now when you find yourself in a turbulent situation that you will have the wisdom of God and you will start talking in certain ways and you'll be like, man, that can't be me. Is that Instagram? Is that TikTok? No, that wasn't any of that. That was the Holy Spirit speaking through you because you had received an impartation. Let me tell you, an impartation is an awakening. I like what it says a few verses down, 1 Samuel 10 verse 9. It says, it was when he had turned, that's, Samuel, that's Saul, 
when he had turned his back to go, that God gave him another heart. You know, in this scripture, I find in many ways my life, my life story. I remember growing up in church and I, 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 you know, I love to sing these songs and worship Jesus and go to church and all that. But I was just in a service just like this, a smaller one, to be honest. And there was a, pre- a preacher there that was speaking. And he started at the end of his speaking, started praying for people. He was praying for this person, this person. Suddenly he looked at me, locked eyes with me. And I was just like trying to look away and just said, you. He calls me out to the front. And literally as a 14 year old at that moment, I had no dreams, no desire to serve Jesus, to walk in the things of God, to be in church, to be a pastor, nothing. But in the moment he started calling forth my future. He said, I feel like God wants you to do this and God's gonna do this through you and God's gonna, and let me tell you, until that moment I had not the remote inkling or even the direction or the affection towards the things that was coming out of his mouth. But the moment he spoke those things, something began to bubble up inside of me and I was like, maybe God has called me to do something more. Maybe God has a greater plan and purpose and that, my friend, is what happens in an impartation. An impartation is a moment where you come with the, in contact with the tangible presence of God and God lifts you up into a new place. And sometimes, I want to address this because sometimes we get a lot of questions now. Sometimes when people receive prayer, I don't know if you've noticed, it's happened a few times here. Uh, sometimes when people receive prayer, have you noticed people like cry, people weep. And recently, like, I don't know if you noticed, like people have been like, falling or something like that. Like, what's up with that? Why do people fall at times when somebody prays for them? Why does that happen? And sometimes we can get into the whole theory of it and I don't want to spend too much time around it. But do you know this happened in scripture? It happened to a guy called Daniel. It happened in the ministry of Jesus. When Jesus spoke to a bunch of people, they fell backwards. Now here's the thing. I don't like to call it falling. I like to call it overwhelmed by the presence of God overwhelmed by the presence of God. And you know the word, I wanted to give you a little bit of theology. Do you know the word glory? Everybody say glory. The root, the word, meaning of that word is the word kabod. You know what the word kabod means? Weight. Try carrying a 72 inch TV. Guess what will happen? You'll fall. And sometimes in worship, we're just coming in contact with the weight of God. With the presence of God. Sometimes we try to just theorize this whole thing. Now, I want to say this to you. Falling does not equal meeting Jesus. (laughs) Meeting Jesus equals meeting Jesus. So I want to be careful because I've been in certain environments where unless you fall, you've not had a breakthrough. That's not what we're talking about here. We are here to meet with Jesus. We're here to encounter Jesus. We're here to experience the presence of God. Now, if you call, if you, if you fall, if you laugh, if you cry, if you, you know, have a moment, if you need, tear up, that's okay. At the end of the day, it's the transformation that that encounter produces that really is going to transform the world and the life around them. Are you with me? Are you getting what I'm saying? Let's keep the main thing, the main thing. And the main thing is Jesus and him being lifted up and his presence and his presence in our lives. Number two, impartation for healings and miracles. I think this is the one that a lot of us know about. But how many of you know that Jesus, when his, during his time here on earth, he, he ministered to people. He laid hands on people. He saw people healed. In fact, in Luke chapter 4, verse 40, it says, When the sun went down, everyone had who had anyone sick with some ailment or other brought brought them to Jesus, one by one, he placed, check it out, his hands on them and healed them. He placed his hands on them. When his hands went on people, things happened. We can't, we can't, Deny this. Things happen. And our church, let's, let's not be awkward around this. Things happen. How many of you like the fact that things happen when we actually pray? <laughs> like, I don't even know why we need to be opposed to the fact that, like, why even pray if nothing happens? That's, that's, that's not rocket science, is it? That, that's pretty basic, right? Like, prayer equals change. Prayer equals no change, me, no one prayer. I'm speaking Dubai English now. (laughs) I can say it, you can't, I've got the right complexion. Here we go. (laughs) How many of you know that prayer 
shifts things. Prayer changes circumstances. Prayer produces miracles. And this is just not in the life of Jesus. This happens in the ministry of the disciples. Check out what happens in Acts chapter 3 verse 1. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a lame man from birth was there at the gate of beautiful verse 3. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently. Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at him eagerly. Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold, but I want to give you what I have in the name of Jesus. Get up and walk. The, then Peter took the lame man by the hand, helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood up on his feet and began to walk. Then walking, leaping and praising God, he went into the temple with them. I want to look at verse six for a moment. Acts three, verse six. Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold, but I will give you what I have. I want you to notice what Peter says, and I'm really careful how I put this to you. Peter did not say, I want to give you what God has. The source of the miracle was Jesus, or is Jesus. But the conduit through which Jesus delivered the goods was through a guy called Peter. And I need you to understand this, that God actually still uses people. He actually still talks to people about certain situations, about certain circumstances that me might be going through, that I might be going through. And in a moment, he can speak a word that can transform us in Jesus' name. You know, I want to take a moment to talk about our prayer team. This morning at the end of the service, we're going to have a moment again where we're going to invite the prayer team and they're going to pray for you because how many of you know just a message about prayer and laying on of hands and you don't have the package? What is this about, right? So we're going to facilitate that to happen. But I want you to know our prayer team have actually been fasting and praying for you. This week, they've taken time in their calendar to pray and fast. Why? Because they said, they're not coming here to meet with me. They're coming here to meet with Jesus. And I better go into church. I better go into that moment of prayer, having caught something, having caught some substance that I can release and inform and give to God's people. Here's number three, impartation of gifts. Impartation of gifts. Again, this happened through and through in the Bible, but before I share a story from the Bible, I wanna share this from a very practical standpoint. How many of you have ever like, how many of you love coffee here? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm glad I'm in a spirit-filled church. <laughs> so so uh, the rest of you come to better life. No, <laughs> so, I'm joking, right? No, I love coffee, but my coffee infatuation eventually led to a point where I didn't just wanna taste good coffee, I wanted to make good coffee. And so guess what? If you wanna learn how to make good coffee, you can YouTube all you want, you can Google all you want, but the best thing you can do is find a seasoned barista. Find someone that you can just come alongside and see how they grind the beans, see how they budge in the tamper, see how they set the temperature, see how they get the gear going, why? Because if you wanna learn anything, you've gotta be first what? An apprentice. If you're a surgeon, if you're a doctor, there's an element in your, in your education where it's not just reading books and understanding things theoretically. There's an element where you come around an atmosphere. You know, and in every career pathway, there's what you call being in the presence of a teacher, being in the presence of someone. And this principle is throughout the Bible. There's a guy called Moses and he was overwhelmed with leading his team and leading his church. And one day he was sort of like, what are you doing Moses? Like you're gonna just burn out doing this. And so he got advice from his father-in-law for the first time in history, somebody listened to their father-in-law, praise God. So Moses, Moses is talking to his father-in-law. His father's father-in-law says to him, you know what, you gotta find able men. You gotta find good leaders. And literally what happens is without getting spooky, I believe it's Genesis 20, 21, somewhere there, somewhere around there, he chooses 70 leaders. And literally what happens is the Bible says he trained them, gave them skills and everything. But literally there was a spiritual thing that happened. God took the spirit of Moses and put it upon these leaders. And they begin to lead, administer, guide, influence the process. We see this in the case of a guy called Elijah and another guy called Elisha. Elijah 
re recognizes that he's about to retire, he's, he's aging, he's done the hours, he needs to find an apprentice, so he goes and finds this guy called Elisha. I do not know why he had to choose a guy with a similar name, but anyways, it was like Apple iPhone 15, iPhone 16, right? So Elijah, Elisha, he finds this guy called Elisha, Elisha starts serving him, doing all these things, and there's a moment, there's this epic moment where Elijah is about to leave. And as he's about to leave, he turns to Elisha, his student, his apprentice, and says, what would you like? What's, what, what is really deep on the inside of you? And check out what he says in 2 Kings chapter 2. It says, when they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, ask, what shall I do for you before I'm taken from you? And Elisha said, please let there be a double portion of your spirit I put in their gift, grace on me. In other words, Elisha was saying, I can speak, I can preach, I can teach, I can do a good service, but what you have on your life is something different. The way you call down things, the way you hear the voice of God, the way you are able to uh, just communicate deep truth that no one else could have shared with you, I need that on my life. In other words, friend, what Elisha was saying was he was saying, I need an impartation. And church, I need us to know there's an impartation has the power to accelerate our spiritual growth and to help lay a foundation for our future. An impartation has the ability to accelerate things. Some of you have been stuck for so long in one space and you're like, I know God has more for me. I want you to know that God has more for you and maybe you might be positioned for an impartation. For an impartation. Now, when I say, when I talk about guys like Moses and Elijah and Elisha, some of you think, oh, Alvin, that's a great leadership principle. Yes, we can see how you need more pastors, you need more leaders. But this is not just a church thing. This is an everyday person thing. God's plan is not just to choose a chosen few and use them. He has a plan for each and every one of them, every one of us. And he wants to use you. You may never work in a church, so to say, but you can bring church to where you're at. You can bring the presence of God to where you're at. You can bring the wisdom of God to where you're at. You can bring inside understanding and truth to the relational circles that you're a part of. And that's why an impartation is so important. An impartation is such a key thing. In fact, as I was praying and preparing this message, I began to really feel there are people in this room, and I want to say this with all humility and love, that have been struggling with the same thing over and over and over, and you have finally camped at a station called Hopeless. I want to encourage you this morning. I want to let you know there is hope for you. That I'm believing, as I was fasting, I was actually fasting for people that have been struggling with that one thing for so many years, that this morning would be a morning that you would experience true breakthrough in that area as you come out for prayer in Jesus' name. Romans 1, Paul is talking to the Roman church. He's telling to them, you guys are famous. You guys are known all around the world. That's what Romans 1 to 10 says. You are famous. You're popular. Everybody's inspired by you. But check out what he says to the church. He says, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. Why do we need an impartation? So that we can be strong. Why do we need an impartation? So we can face the challenges around us. Why do we need an impartation so that we can face the giants, the trials, the valleys, the situations, the circumstances around us? That is why we need an impartation. And check out what, that letter that Paul wrote was not just to the pastor of the Roman church. He was speaking to the whole church. He was saying, guys, I love that we are exchanging letters, but I'm saving up. I'm planning the calendar. I'm trying to see how I can change the, the, the itinerary so I can be with you in person, so I can impart to you some spiritual gift to the whole church. What would it be like if we were to receive an impartation that comes straight from God? When I talk about this kind of impartation, I want to take a few seconds to even talk about negative impartations. You know, there are some of us, what happens is, and I don't want to be judgmental, but we come, we come into Saturday and we receive a touch of God, we receive a word from God, but is your life structured in such a way that you're surrounded by negative impartations? What are the friendships that you have? What are the relationships that you have? Uh, I'm gonna go in 1992 for a second. What are some of the music and some of the movies that you watch? Is there stuff in there that's keeping you up at night? Why, I mean, life is stressful anyways. Why are we adapting and eating all these things and taking all these things and consuming all these things that's influencing and impacting us? I wanna encourage us, church, let's not dabble in some stuff. 
I think sometimes we can be so like, nowadays, like the, the church scene is amazing. I love it. I love that we, I can wear a t-shirt and preach and no one gets judged or gets evil about it. I hope not. I'm sorry, right? If you have any complaints, please email ebel at mosaicdivide.org. <laughs> but, 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 you know, I love that how we can just be so relaxed in church. But let me tell you, there are some things in the things of God that we need to be a bit more understanding about. We, need, we can't be do- dabbling with some stuff. You know, it's not, it's, not, it's not Jesus and a little bit of that. It's not Jesus and a little bit of juju. It's not le- Jesus and a little bit of, oh, I just was a bit curious, a little bit of that. I want to encourage us, let's be careful about where we receive from. Is that okay? You know, this morning, you know what is happening? You're receiving an impartation. Every time you come to church in worship, as the word is being spoken, you're being imparted into. Hopefully, some of you feel a lot better than when you walked in first. Right? And you're being imparted into, you know, another place where you can receive an impartation. It's not just when the pastor prays for you. Another incredible place that you can receive an impartation is in a connect group. You don't have to wait every till the weekend to come to church and receive an impartation. Join a connect. Let somebody pray with you. Let somebody pray for you and let them impart into you. Maybe you might need some encouragement. Maybe you might go through a dry space. Maybe you might be believing for a visa. Get a community around you that can impart faith into you. And guess what? You don't need to be the only person that needs to be imparted into. I believe you can impart into others. I believe that you can make a difference. I believe that as God takes you from strength to strength and as your faith grows and as your understanding of the things of God grows, God begins to use you. All of a sudden, you're in a connect. After 18 months, you're like, hey, I think God is leading me to start a connect. Oh my gosh, is that God? Is that pizza? I do not know. Let me talk to one of the pastors. Let's pray about it. Let's go on that, ch- on that journey, church, because God does not just want to impart into us. He also wants to impart through us. He wants to impart through us. Some of the biggest miracles that have happened here at Mosaic have not happened here at this platform. It's happened in our connects. It's amazing when we begin to get those reports and messages of people of how God's using us. I'm I'm so excited. I I get so excited. when I'm more excited when God uses you than he uses me. I'm telling you, this just fills me up with joy. Number four, impartation for commissioning people. I don't know if you've noticed this here at Mosaic, every now and then we get people up on the platform, we pray for them, we lay hands, we pray, and you know, we, we say these are pastors, these are connect leaders, whatever, like when we do connect leaders nights at different places, we pray for new connect leaders coming in. Why do we do that? Because this whole thing is not just a, 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 a tangible, a natural thing. This thing is is spiritual. This thing is supernatural. There's something powerful about when we commission people. And this, we notice this practice had not just come up in the 21st century. It was there right in church history. It was right there in the book of Acts. Check out what it says in Acts 13. While they were worshiping the Lord, fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul. I mean, thank God that they listened to the Holy Spirit that day. Because if they hadn't listened to the Holy Spirit, your, your, your Bible would have been probably one kilo lighter or something like that. You know, we wouldn't have 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, 1 Corinthians, 2 Timothy. Paul, the guy that they're talking about in this text, is the guy that was eventually going to write those portions. Separate to me. And then he says, after they'd fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So Barnabas and Saul, sent forth by the Holy Spirit, went to Cyprus, went on from there. Now, this is not just from the, when we get pastors up that we want to do this. Here at Mosaic, we believe that every moment is a moment of sending people off. When we baptize people in water, we're sending you off. When we get people married, we're sending you off. Let me tell you, a marriage is a holy thing. It's one of the things that pleases the heart of God so much. And it's one of the things that we need to approach with such sacredness, tenderness, fragility, and an understanding of how powerful it is. When we get pastors or leaders on board, we pray and we release them. When we send people out on mission, we send them out. I mean, just two weeks ago, I didn't ask permission for this, but let's go. I'll apologize after this. Two weeks ago, I had Pastor, Ra- uh, Pastor Arun come up to me and said to me, Pastor Alwyn, I said a bunch of things, and he said, I'm heading off to Atlanta. It's like a ministry thing that he had to go. It was a conference, a few things he had to do. And I, I, as I finished praying for him, he was walking away. I was just sitting there and thinking, you know, here's a man who's probably got, obviously, decades of ministry, years of knowledge, years of, why is he coming to this guy in a T-shirt asking for prayer? Because it's not who's praying, it's the principle. It's the principle. 
It's a principle. And then when Pastor, Pastor Rune came back, well, you know, hey, how, how did it go? Amazing testimony stories. Let me tell you, there's something about commissioning. I like how one of my mentors used to say this. Some were sent and some just went. <laughs> Have you been sent out to start a connect or did you just go? Have you been sent out to start a ministry or did you just go? Have we just been sent out? No, I believe that God has a purpose for us. But hey, let's bring it together. We are better together. We want to back you, support you, platform you. Can I just say, in the, in the year to come, you're not going to have Pastor Alvin on the stage preaching week in and week out. I'm already looking at retirement. I'm saying, God, send us some preachers. Send us some speakers. Let's, get, let's begin to create a flow in this. We want to send you out. But I want to encourage you. Some were sent, but some just went. Let's be sent out. He sent out the disciples. He sent out the apostles. They sent out Paul and Barnabas. They're sending people out. And we want to be sending you out into your city, into your, into your schools, into your workplaces, into your homes, into your families. There's something powerful about it. And there's a story in the Bible where, where there was a bunch of men that took matters into their hands and they just sort of, I might probably skip that because I'm just looking at the time. So I just want to jump to what happens in Acts chapter 19, verse 19. It says, also many who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all and they counted up the value of them and a total 50 thousand pieces of silver so the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed Do you know what was happening what was happening in the story was God was moving powerfully and leaders were rising and things were happening but there was a there was a moment where people said hey there's stuff in my life I need to give up there's stuff in my life that I need to lay down there's stuff in my life there are friendships the, one of the one of the most spiritual things somebody in this room can do is when you step out of this building to take your phone and to delete a number that you should not be having in your phone in the first place I'll move on. <laughs> Sometimes we're dabbling in things that we probably shouldn't be dabbling in. And I say this lovingly because let's hold, not hold on to stuff that we need to lay down. See, here's the thing, right? If I, if I come into the presence of God and I say, God, I need you, and God looks at my hand and it's filled with all this stuff, and God's like, I want to put this in your hand, but your hands are occupied. Your hands are, 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 are occupied with all this stuff. Maybe before God can give, maybe we need to let go. Maybe before God can release, maybe we need to return. And I want to encourage us this morning that there's something powerful about sending, sending, sending. And that's what we want to do in a few minutes. We want to send you out. We want to send you out with an impartation to face the storm that you're facing. We want to send you out to, with an impartation to face maybe the terminal illness that the doctor spoke over you. We want to, I, I believe there are people in this room that a doctor has spoken a word over you. This morning, you're going to get an update on that. You're going to get a second spoken word over that situation over you. I believe there are people in, in this room that there's been labels spoken over you. You're going to have a second opinion coming through as you respond. And so I remember when we were moving to Dubai, you know, I don't know if you know our story. We just celebrated our 12 months now in Dubai. But when we were moving in Dubai, moving to Dubai, we made the decision to move to Dubai. But honestly, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure because all I knew was all the things I knew, but I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know what was gonna unfold. So all I did was I put in this book all the things I was losing, bad start. Friendships, relationships, opportunities. You know, if, if, if I had to live in Australia, I could, I could preach every weekend in a different church, in a different city and not even fly out of Australia. We had so many friends, so many relationships and Leah was feeling this thing in her heart. She was saying, I think we need to move. And I was the one, being honest, I was the less spiritual one saying, I'm not sure. Let's go every few months. Let's go every six months. But then we made the decision. But then there was something in me that said, God, I, 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 know, what your, I know what the Bible says. I know that we don't just go. We want to be sent. And do you know the last month we were there, literally every week, it got, it got to the point where it was ridiculous. We literally had random people giving us moments of impartation, literally. And one of the key moments happened 16 months ago. We had decided by then to move to Dubai. 
but we weren't sure about the mosaic thing. We were still in conversation with the team here and there was a lot, a lot of back and forth going. It was a big decision to make, understandably. And so we had already booked tickets. We knew we were going somewhere, but we were still up in the air. And I was in one of my friend's church. I was preaching in the morning service and then they had this other guy coming in in the night, a pastor from New Zealand, uh, quite well known, but I think he had the second largest church there, regardless of size or name or whatever, but there's, there's something on his life. And there was a moment in that service, he was preaching on the topic called ask, ask. Just ask God, ask God for the nations, ask God for the building, ask God for the business, ask God, just ask, asking you shall be given, seeking you can, you shall find that whole premise, right? And as he was preaching, mid-preach, he stops and speaks a word over me. And here's the crazy part, we're gonna play that video in a minute. But now the crazy part is, I thought that word was for me. But now that I'm here, and you're sort of stuck with me, at least for now, that's actually a word for us. So I want you to maintain that posture as we watch this video on what that word was. Why don't we look to the screens? Thank you, team. To ask, to ask, to ask, to ask. It's your time to ask. It's your time to ask. Elwin, as you go to, to Dubai, God's gonna give you the big ask. You've got an ask on the inside of you. God's sending you there. It's a world city. It's a world city. It's a world city. It's where the wealth of the world is now emerging. But God's saying, I'm gonna use that position of influence. I sent Paul to Rome. I'm sending Elwin to Dubai. I'm, I sent Paul to Rome. I'm sending Elwin to Dubai. You thought that you've been through trial. You thought you've been through set, setback. No, says God. I've been ordered in the steps of a good man and I've taken you through the, the, the nation of Israel went through Egypt to get to the promised land and you've gone through some challenges to get to your blessing but God says you're the right man at the right time in the right place with the right plan and God says I'm going to expand it and I'm going to bless it and I'm going to open up doors over you and pour out my favour and God's going to cause you to believe Him for the miraculous I feel like God even saying, dream bigger. Dream even bigger. I see people flying in from all over the world, literally all over the world. Nations that are close to the gospel, people are going to fly in to Dubai and you're going to equip them there and they're going to go back and revival will break out where people have said the gospel cannot go. God is literally going to allow you to impact nations. I see hundreds of thousands of people in closed nations being one to the kingdom because you have been willing to stay limber in the hand of God and resisted bitterness and resisted fear and resisted self-doubt and stood in your calling. And God says, well done. And I'm pleased with you. And I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to pour out favor upon you. Holy Spirit, the power of God is just touching you right now. Come, the fire of God, just touch him in Jesus' name. Great mantle. A great mantle is upon that man. A great mantle is upon that man. There is indeed an apostolic calling upon you. Tremendous favor, tremendous blessing. Wow. Whew. Man. Man, every time I watch that video, just feel it. That's how you feel it right now. It's, just, it's amazing, a video from 16 months ago, how it can carry an impartation. You just received an impartation just watching that video. Something just shifted in your heart saying, wow, why has God brought me to Dubai? Why has God brought me to the city? Why has God brought me to this church? What does God have for me? You know, I like what Paul says. Paul says to Timothy, he says something to Timothy. Timothy was his protege, Timothy was his apprentice, Timothy was his disciple. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, Paul says to him, he says, I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother and your mother, and I know that same faith continues strong in you. And check out what it says. But this is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. This is why I remind you. See, some of you this morning, you may just need a reminder. 
Some of you have a word from God. Some of you have a mission and a vision from God. But let this moment be a reminder, a trigger point. Now here's what I want to point at. He says, I want to remind you to fan into flames, to stir up, one translation says, the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. Here's the question, who gave the gift? Speak to me, who gave the gift? Who, who, who gave the breakthrough? Who laid hands? And I was trying to think, how can I best explain this? Because I've been in situations where people receive prayer from somebody and then they start talking like that person. They start dressing like that person. Uh, they, they put on their accent, right? And that's not what, what's happening here. The best example is, how many of you have ever had a battery in your car stop? Now, thank God for Cafu, but back in the day, every young person, back in the day, we actually had needed to do, have this thing called friends with, on, who could do a favor for us. And you had to call a friend. They had to tell them where they, they are on the, you are on the highway. They would have to bring their car. It's a work of art. You can't just sit there. You've got to angle your car in a certain way. You've got to pop up the hood on both. Get the jumper cables. Don't mix the blue and the red. It's like first time you did it. Oh, it didn't work. Oh, it's mixed up, right? You got to put the cable, you got to plug in the, re, the, the positive to the positive, the negative to the negative. Your friend starts his car, you start your car. You're like, oh, nothing's happening. You go again, nothing's happening. Boom, third time, it starts. You guys say, hey man, I owe you a burger. Let's catch up on Friday. It's on me, right? You head off to work. But here's what happened. What happened was you were charged. Here's what that did not happen. Your friend did not open up his hood, take his battery out and put his battery in yours. When you both left the highway, you had your own battery. He had his own battery. And so impartation is not you now receiving prayer and now you've got to be something or someone else. It's, I don't need an impartation to be you. I need an impartation to be me. I'm stuck on the highway. I'm stuck on the highway, I need a mate, I need a friend, I need somebody to just plug in the cables into their spirit connected with mine and through that process begin to see, supercharge my situation, supercharge my faith, supercharge the circumstances that I'm facing and that's literally what's happening this morning. So we don't have to be weird about it, unusual about it, God wants to touch you this morning and so I want to invite the prayer team come on out to the front if you can position yourselves and we're going to just we're going to this is not one of those like I want to encourage you like let's not procrastinate around it let's respond as the response goes out thank you Jesus Father I thank you for every person in this room I thank you for people that will respond this morning. I thank you for people that will just say, I need a touch from God. I need the presence of God in my life. I need a move of God. I'm struggling through stuff. Maybe there's a person here that's like, I don't know what God has for me next. Whatever it is, Lord, we believe that you still speak and you still talk. And so we respond this morning in Jesus' name. We pray, amen.